more on the situation in this region, Owen Fairclough sat down with Shanta Devarajan, the World Bank's chief economist for the Middle East and North Africa. And he began by asking him which region troubled him the most. The escalation of the, of the war uh, with ISIS spreading uh, between uh, Iraq and Syria has done serious uh, damage to the trade relations among the countries in the Mashrek. So, for instance, a country like Jordan, uh, about 20% of its exports go to Iraq. Now, those have come to a grinding halt with something like, whereas we used to observe 500 trucks a day, now we observe 25 uh, trucks uh, crossing the border. Lebanon is another country that is being uh, severely hurt because Le uh, Iraq used to be a, a, not just a trading partner of Lebanon's, but a conduit for Lebanon's trade with the, with the East. And those have also come to a stop. It's, this is even more serious if you take into account the fact that these countries, just before 2010, these countries were con seriously considering forming a trade uh, integration of actually boosting their trade and their, uh, their economies by forming trade uh, agreements. And if we add the foregone opportunities of that, these, these costs could be of the order of 40%. Let's talk about Gaza. Some of the estimates I've seen are that it could cost as much as $8 billion to rebuild this, this economy. Well, it's important to keep in mind that Gaza was already in a recession before the conflict started this summer. So this was an economy that was already, because of the blockades and the tunnel uh, interruptions, was already in negative growth or very close to zero growth, which is negative per capita growth. And then we had the, the destruction with a, a couple of thousand uh, lives uh, lost this, this summer. So when we talk about rebuilding, we're not talking just about reconstructing the damaged, uh, damaged infrastructure, but actually getting the Gazan economy moving again, which means opening up to trade, uh, uh, maybe, and there is some dis discussion of rebuilding the port and, and the airport, which will all be critical for the Gazan economy, not just to go back to the state it was at the beginning of this year, but actually being a dynamic uh, economy in the long term. The World Bank itself has said that a lot of growth will be driven by construction, and yet we know there are problems bringing construction supplies into Gaza. Is that growth likely to be strangled somewhat by the fact that there are blockades in place? The reconstruction is going to require building materials. That's just a, a, a fact. And so if we want to be able to reconstruct some of the damaged infrastructure, we will need to get the supplies. But I think growth in Gaza is not just being driven by, by construction. In the short run, it might be, because that's the activity that is, being, uh, that is needed as, a, as an emergency. Growth in Gaza is actually driven by uh, trade. Uh, the Gazans are actually quite entrepreneurial. They, they, they have fish, they have furniture, they have uh, uh, agricultural output. But in order to be able to uh, promote that kind of growth, you need to be able to trade. They need to have inputs coming in, the imported inputs, and they need to be able to get the produce out. Uh, so that's absolutely key. The, we've, we've seen various analyses that show that the blockades and the um, and the interruption of the tunnel traffic have done serious damage to the economy of Gaza. Some of the figures show that it's the best educated people in these North African countries that are often suffering the worst effects of unemployment. Well, it's, it's very serious, um, but we have to understand a little bit the causes of it as well. And one of the reasons why the educated people have a higher unemployment rate than the less educated is that they used to aspire to public sector jobs. It was the public sector in most of these countries that was the employer of first resort. And part of the unemployment is that the public sector has been retrenching rather than growing. And the private sector hasn't developed the, the, the dy dynamism to create jobs for this, for this population. Talking about the region as a whole, whenever you look at these countries and the problems they have, do you ever think it's a lost cause? No. <laughs> uh, I actually think that w this region uh, show, ha has shown the success of what some, some other regions have tried to do. For instance, this is the region with some of the best human indicators in the world. Take even the Palestinian territories, West Bank and Gaza. They have human indicators such as levels of education and levels of health, child mortality, maternal mortality, that are comparable to Turkey. 
with a per capita income which is about one-fifth of that of Turkey. So these people have been doing certain things right, and that's a foundation on which the, these countries can grow.